Hi, oh, yeah. So this is going to be a video based on a handout I've been uh, working on for one of my students. I just want to demonstrate um, what it is. So, um, really, uh, I mean, I've talked a lot on this channel about how to sort of play, um, you know, what, what scales to use, for instance, uh, when playing through a chord progression um, according to the Barry Harris method. But I haven't necessarily done a huge amount on... Um, talking about uh, um, actually how to build lines. So I just wanted to sort of go through some simple stuff. Um, now, I, I want to encourage everybody to sort of follow this kind of um, discipline or structure or whatever you want to call it or, or process with their own material, but um, I'm just going to demonstrate it with two simple ideas. So the first one is um, arpeggios, and we're going to use a C7 chord to start off with. <laughs> got um, on that C7 chord we've got uh, obviously a scale which is the C7 scale and other people should be able to play in all different positions and so on and that's the C mix Lydian scale as it's known to most modern um, you know, most modern theory texts call it the mix Lydian mode um, the older generation of uh, bebop musicians, including Barry Harris, might call it the bebop, uh, the um, dominant scale, right? So it's the dominant scale, it goes on dominant chord. Um, I will say dominant scale on the whole because mixolydian is hard to say. <laughs> and dominant, I like it better as a, as a name anyway. So within the dominant scale, we have four arpeggios that relate to the C7 chord, and they all can be built off the, uh, of the chord tones of the C7 chord. So... I'm um, sorry, my collar's uh, an absolute disgrace, I do apologise. That didn't improve it at all. Anyway, so you've got the C7 arpeggio. So this is the first one, which is obviously C7. Second one is E minor 7 flat 5. It's like that. And the next one is a um, G minor 7. Okay. And the one after that, or... Right. One after that is a B flat major seventh. So the C seven is built off the, the one. The uh, E minor seven flat five is built off the three. The G minor seven is built on the five. And the B minor, the B flat major seventh, sorry, is built on the flat seventh. Okay, of, of the chord. So um, I guess that's great. So what can you do with that? Well, you can do all sorts of things, but one very uh, common little uh, device is this sort of what I think of as a bebop cliche, where you have a lower neighbor tone, lower chromatic neighbor tone um, on the offbeat, and then you have a triplet arpeggio based on one of these chords, which uh, then goes onto the beat. So, uh, for example, for the C7, it would work like this. So, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, and for the... Um, E minor 7 flat 5, the chord on 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Okay, and for the next one, which is G minor 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Okay, and for the next one, which is um, B flat major 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Okay, so that's all um, usable on the C7 sound. that one a lot, the flat 7th, I, I tend to use that, and also this one, I use that, uh, this one less commonly actually, interestingly, should probably practice that one more often. So um, you can move these around rhythmically, so it can start on the off of 1, the off of 2, the off of 3, and the off of 4, so I'll just demonstrate that one, 2, 3, 4, what, uh, let's do it on, yeah, on the C7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. So uh, I'll count all the way through that actually. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay? So that gives you a few different places you can play that. Um, now I just wanted to make an aside that what Barry Harris says about arpeggios or any interval intervallic stuff as opposed to just playing a straight scale is that it can be much more free rhythmically. So we're not purely limited to playing these as triplets, it just so happens that that's a, that's a device that you often hear in the music of Charlie Parker, so that's why we're doing it. But um, arpeggios can be used very rhythmically freely over the, um, over the chords, which is uh, one of the reasons why they're such a useful resource for improvisation. Um, we're going to move on to descending scales now. So 
Um, Barry Harris uh, has a system of uh, rules which cover added note scales, but I just wanted to do something quite um, quite simple, uh, which is that um, we're going to start all our scales on the beat, on beat one, and if they are, um, you know, if, if, if we start on a chord tone, we will add in a half step between the seven, sorry, between the flat seven and the one, okay, because this is a dominant seventh scale, so we'll add in a half, uh, half step in this case. It doesn't have to be a half step. You could add in the note A, for example, so you go, um, here, here's a scale that you could use, you go, but we're going to go, going to put a half step in there, so most people would call that a bebop uh, dominant scale, or a dominant bebop scale, we're not going to call it that. Um, and, and the rules change depending on whether you start on a chord tone or an offbeat. So if I start on the two. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to quickly go through. Um, uh, it's going to be seven bars of this, each starting on a different degree of the scale. And I will add in the half steps accordingly. And the rhythm will go ba da 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 bam, ba da 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 bam for each. Okay, so let's go one, uh, one, two, three, four. I'm sorry, that's wrong. Now, what you notice is that um, we stop each time on a chord tone. So I'll play that again. So first. On E, right? Next one is um, playing from the, the uh, ninth or the second. We stop on the same note because we have one note less, right? Stop, stop on the five. Sorry, that's wrong. Okay, so I made a mistake there. We start on the four, we end up on the same note, and the next one will be. And that's, that's the whole scale completed. So if we were going to go, uh, and then, then it would reset itself as we go up to C. So hopefully you can appreciate that we, we are, um, even if some of the chord tones don't end up on the beat, we are definitely ending up on a chord tone. And um, if we go on an off beat, the rules are reversed, so something like this. Uh, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, or one. To the second would be one, two, three, four, okay. So the rules become reversed over. Anyway, I'll quickly move on because I don't want to waste too much time talking about the raw materials. Um, and what we can start to do is we can start to play lines that combine arpeggios and scales. So, for instance, um, I've got an example here which is starting on the G minor seven. So here we go one, two. And then we end up on the fourth of the scale. So that means when we descend, because we've ended up on the B, one, two, three, we just go four, one, two, and we end up on the G again, one. Okay, if we were going to do, um, I don't know, if we're going to do a different one, let's try um, the B flat major. It might work differently. No, it'll work the same, because we're not on the chord tone. So it goes one, two, three. to the B flat to make sure it ends on the chord tone there. Okay, um, let's do another one, let's do the C. One, two, we're ending up in the chord tone. And what you can do, obviously, is you can move these around. So one, two, three, four, one, two. For example, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, okay, one, that wasn't right, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, yeah, that was right, sorry, yeah, okay, and um, you can also add in an arpeggio after a scale, so if I descend from, let's say, the third, one, one, two, three, 
So let's go one and two, let's do a triplet. One, two, three, and four. One, one, and two, three, and four. Okay, here we go. One, one, that's what I'm going to do. One, two, three, and four. You do that. Or you could go um, to a different scale degree. Uh, or you could end up on a different scale degree. So you go one, two, three, and four. Or one, two, three, and four. Okay, and already we're starting to get things that sound like lines. So maybe I'll do an ascending arpeggio, then I'll descend, and then I'll do another triplet ascending arpeggio, something like this. Uh, let's start on the E. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, um, sorry. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Maybe. Uh, one. For example, um, one, two, three, four, one, two. So you can go. I mean, you can run these through. So let's 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 do. Um, I don't know. Uh, one. Ba da ba di ba ba da ba da ba da ba di ba ba da ba da ba da ba di. Not exactly the hippest rhythm, but it's a good exercise. So one, two. So let's start here. One, two, three, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Ah, oh, okay. This is interesting. So we go one, one, two, three, four. My point is really, I'm trying to sort of demonstrate how we can start to create lines. Um, I can do a descending, uh, uh, obviously link up descending scales and arpeggios and stuff, it's very obvious bebop language. Um, one nice way you can vary it a bit is you can uh, use a pivot, what Barry Harris calls a pivot, which we might call as octave displacement. So if I play this arpeggio, for instance, um, uh, let's do it in this area. I mean, what I can do is I can take these notes and I can put them down an octave. So, yeah. so one, two, three, four. Uh, or it could be, sorry, uh, one, two, three, four, one. Or it could be, um, I use that one a lot. Another classic. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, so that's using. Um, for instance, is the honeysuckle rose motif. So you can link that into your scales again. So if I go, um, let's try and do a uh, one with a one, two, three, uh, sorry, descending uh, triplet arpeggio with a neighbor tone going into a descending scale for two beats, um, and then um, let's make that three beats actually. So it lands on beat on, on the third beat of that, and then we do a uh, pivot arpeggio or something. Okay, let's try that anyway. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. Let's give it a go. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, can we do that one? One, two. phrase into the into the next chord which will be resolving to a an F major right I'll touch that I'll touch on that in a sec but let's just go one two we end up on the second degree so we descend the scale without added notes and then we can land on that note and we can go we can we can use that that arpeggio which is G minor seven or we can go uh, so one Going and then we go up the upper G again. So we've got um, just to recap: E half diminished, 
and then we do a pivoted G minor 7. Uh, does that work? Sorry. One and two and three yeah, and four and one. My instincts are right. And then B flat. And this still phrase here. I got this from Don and Lee. This is just a way of playing into the next chord. So we're going to the ninth. Phrase and that's so we're going if you like six on the C7, six or thirteen, three, it's like a little voice leading thing. So the whole phrase goes, sorry, oh, I thought I need to play it slower. Sorry. <laughs> Again, one. So that's a little, a nice little bebop phrase, I think. And there's other things you can do. You can do twiddles. Um, I've noticed one thing that you get a lot is, um, you know, you can have a twiddle on on the beat, and then if it's a triplet twiddle, then then it won't affect the scale. So if I go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two. Oh no, hang on. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So actually, sorry, that counts as an offbeat. So for instance, ba da da bam ba da ba yo bum bum. Actually counts as being a um, uh, scale starting on that note. So again. Okay, so this is uh, some simple in ingredients which you can start using to build lines right away. Um, and, I mean, we can change things harmonically as well. So, for instance, um, if we wanted to use um, a minor, going into this one, we could use, transpose the same material into this key. So it would be, um, uh, let's see, um, so we're going... So I might need to change the bridging phrase a little bit, but I can transpose this bit. So we're going... Uh, yeah, what am I doing? Um, yeah, that's right. Is um, uh, an example of just you know just using a different harmony I could use a tritone. It's difficult. It all requires a bit of thinking, obviously. So you go. Um, without the backing track um, but you can use all of this material and transpose to different dominant chords there are three related dominant chords for any given um, dominant chord so <laughs> uh, for, for C7 you've got um, C7 you've got the E flat 7 and you've got the, the F sharp 7 but you've also got the lesser used A7 which we don't use so much so I'm just hoping that that kind of gives you an idea of how I might go about creating language from these basic raw material building blocks. And these are not the only building materials that you can use, but it's a good start. Um, other things can involve, you know, um, uh, passing tone and closure combinations, um, other scalar patterns. Um, but these, these have got me a long way, and a lot of the stuff I play, for instance, these kind of phrases. Or a 
Ni så svarade Or even as So, I mean, there's a few examples of the kind of things I might even actually play, you know, if I'm sort of um, playing through two fivey kind of chord progressions. And then maybe, um, I don't know, it's... I'm uh, is, uh, moving away slightly from what I was talking about anyway, but um, I hope that kind of makes some sort of sense to you. Um, thanks for watching.